everyone. Um, today we're going to be looking at the final section of your creative writing, which is your zoom out paragraph. So this past term we've done, um, we've covered the GCSE creative writing. We've taught you a planning structure, and as part of that, we've taught you each paragraph slowly helping you to develop various skills to help you really um, become a really strong descriptive writer. Descriptive writing at GCSE is probably the bit of um, English language that students most enjoy um, because it allows you that creativity, that freedom. So this structure shouldn't be to limit that, but what the point of the structure is to make sure that you don't kind of go off on a bit of a tangent and start telling a story about you and your mate going to the shop and buying a bag of crisps and then walking home and finding a zombie and running away and running into a forest and getting chased and all that ridiculous stuff which it is not actually going to get you a very good mark at GCSE because they're not really looking for that kind of what happens they're looking about they're looking at how you write how you describe whether you use good vocabulary good sentences as I said in the very first video so as we've gone along we've looked at trying to build up some more sentence start um sentence starters We've looked at you trying to think about the vocabulary that you use, but also trying to, um, and the kind of figurative language, metaphors and similes, but also making sure that you're kind of following a sensible structure to your writing. So in this final one, this very final paragraph, it's called the zoom out paragraph. So we're just going to talk through some tips for that. Now, the point of the zoom out paragraph is if you imagine a camera um, filming a TV programme or a film, for example, it's almost when the camera pans out across the whole setting. So it goes beyond the picture often. So I'm going to put pans out across whole setting. So you remove yourself from the, the, the drop. The drop is the immediate surroundings within the picture. But the, the, pa the, the zoom out is panning out and looking at everything. Okay, so you... You're most probably going to go beyond the picture or into the distance of the picture anyway. So it's the things that you probably haven't described in much detail so far. The types of things that you might want to include if, you, if it makes it easier to be more specific is a bit more about the weather. Has the weather changed since the drop paragraph? So in your drop paragraph you might have only just casually mentioned, I don't know, that it, it's hot. But what is the sun specifically doing? Or um, if you've mentioned it raining at the start, be more specific about the clouds because they're in the distance, they're in the sky. So the sky is also something you might want to describe um, because I probably in pieces of creative writing, some of, the, some of the best pieces of creative writing, especially of weather, give good attention to the sky. And lots of you did that in the, um, what week was it? It was the week, it was the first week, the, the picture with the um, lake. Lots of you gave some really good descriptions of the sky in that first drop paragraph, but you could go back to that at the end. Okay, so we've got our weather, the sky, the light, and if the light's changing, excellent. That's a good thing um, to talk about that change. I'm going to put skyline as well. So, for example, if you're in a place like a town or a city, you might kind of describe it from above almost as like a, almost a bird's eye view. But you're going much bigger than the picture. That's the really important thing. Now, what you want to try and do, and I know this sounds a bit strange, You want to end where you began, okay? So if you look at the very first line of your drop paragraph, what you're going to try and do in your zoom out is link back to it. Now, this is what we call, and hopefully you should all know this because it's on your knowledge organiser. You did it this year for Of Mice and Men. You should know it, basically. But it's called a cyclical narrative, okay? And it's good to try and use that cyclical narrative, even in a piece of description. It just shows that you're thinking about your end right from the start. Okay, so that's what we're doing. We're linking back to the beginning. Now, my piece of writing, this um, this description of this beautiful paradise beach, mine started like this. Tranquil, peaceful, calm. The only sound is the gentle splashing of waves. Okay, that can be 
what I go back to right at the end. But I've got to be careful how I do that because I'm meant to be focusing on the sky um, and zooming out. So, one last thing. It's not the same as the drop. If you think of it like, um, let's say, a school, okay? If you go into Churchtown School, there are various locations you can be in, like the cage, for example, like like um, someone's classroom, like an English classroom. And if you're in an English classroom, that's your drop, isn't it? That's your immediate surroundings. If the picture was of your English classroom, your drop would be what you see in that classroom, the atmosphere in that classroom. The zoom out is where you think about the whole school, the whole school building, what's happening outside, the weather. So you're going bigger than your drop. And even if you've mentioned the weather or the sky in that opening, that's absolutely fine. You're just going to do it in more detail in your zoom out. Okay, so let's get on to the example. And then what we've got here is a whole piece of writing that we've done over the past four weeks of this paradise setting. Okay, now I ended my, I'm just trying to find it, my zoom in paragraph like this. So talking about the gentle water lapping and settling on the crystal sand, adding beauty to this endless paradise. So I've just mentioned something being endless. So it might be nice to use that word endless now to describe something zooming out. So I'm going to start with endless. And so we love a double adjective for the sentence starter, so that's a nice way to start. Endless and I kind of want to put something like limitless, but I don't know if that um that works necessarily. I'm going to have a little look. What do we have on... So sometimes for vocabulary, it's just good to use a thesaurus if you have one. Or if you don't have one, a Google. Just using Google. So I've just gone on Google and I've typed in endless synonym. And we've got uh, interminable, not quite what I mean, limitless, as I said, unlimited, boundless, infinite. That's good. Let's go for that. So endless and infinite... And this is to describe the the sky. So the um, I want a, a blue to describe the sky. I can't remember what I described it in the first paragraph. I'm trying to make sure we use. I talked about the azure sky actually. So the azure sky seems to stretch beyond the horizon and go on forever so that idea of the um the sky being like limitless that pure blue that that was in the picture um i think i want to emphasize how the the sky is empty so we'll go for no Gonna use a little quick list of three and repetition. No clouds. No. Now in the second paragraph, I described that storm coming, so I'm gonna put no storms here. So it's almost like the per the narrator is kind of in a false sense of security. Um, no storms. No danger. But obviously the reader knows that the storm is coming because I did that in my shift. Just, I'm going to use limitless now. Limitless warmth. And comfort. It's quite an optimistic view of the setting here, isn't it? Whereas this shift paragraph was quite negative and pessimistic. Um, we'll stick with that. Now I'm going to talk about um, the sun. So I described it as an amber sun 
in um, the, the drop paragraph. What I want to do is show that we're kind of moving towards night time, which is going to be the um, arrival of the storm. So I'm going to go for amber. No, let's not let's not go for that. I want to say I'm going to start with the verb melting. Melting and merging. into shades of red and indigo the once amber sun so remember we're zooming out so we're focusing on the really big things like the sky and the, the weather um, I'm going to probably go beyond the beach in a little bit um, so just limitless warmth and comfort, melting and merging into shades of red and indigo, the once amber sun begins to set on this heaven turning the sky. So I, I kind of want to talk about all the colours of a sunset. So I've mentioned kind of red and indigo turn from amber. I'm going to say turning the sky into a palette. And what do I want to say? Artist's palette. Uh, I'm just going to go for a palette. of burnt shades and dying yellows. Okay. Melting and merging into shades of red and indigo, the once amber sun begins to set on this heaven, turning the sky into a palette of burnt shades and dying yellows. So it's kind of that progression towards negative with like burnt and dying, but I'm sticking to relative positivity. Okay, um, the coastline extends towards so now I'm going towards I'm going away from just this one like beach area and I'm talking about the whole kind of edge of where I am I'm going to imagine that I'm on an island I don't really think I need to name it I want it to be quite a generic kind of paradise setting so the coastline extends towards um dangerous Cliffs and coastal town, no harbours, no, let's get rid of coastal and bustling harbours. Now, this is quite an isolated setting, so I want to kind of acknowledge the kind of quiet in here compared to that. So Peaceful and isolated. This empty um I don't want to call it this empty beach holds treasures. I don't mean like actual treasure, this isn't gone all like treasure island, it just means like peace, the treasure of peace. Holds <laughs> treasures which do not extend across the horizon and throughout 
this island. So I'm saying not everywhere in this in this pass this um, connected to this ocean is necessarily peaceful. So I've done a sense of so I've done the, the sun. So if I look at these things that I mentioned up here, I've kind of covered the weather and the sky. I've talked about the skyline or at least the kind of bigger view of the setting itself. And now I want to talk about the light. So obviously as the sun's setting, what's going to happen is things are going to get darker. Okay, so let's go back to my sentence starters. I haven't done an adverb one yet, so let's go for that. So I think I need to start with something like Cautiously, let's personify the sun, cautiously fading into the ocean below the, the sun sends darkness uh, no not and just across this once bright setting now i need to go back now because i think this is my last sentence i need to go back this is a drop one that we did a few weeks ago now um i need to go back to this first thing so i use tranquil peaceful calm i don't want to use that again because i think if i go back to that it might be a little bit over the top because we've already had that shift and i think i'm trying to show that you know the, the storm is still on its way because remember that was only a flash forward um, what I think I'm going to do is use this the sound, the gentle splashing of waves as they reach the shore but I'm going to show that they are getting a bit louder and that's again that impending storm so once bright setting there is still the sound of waves with their gentle, no, once gentle splashing growing louder ending and then I am going to go back to tranquil, but I'm going to use it as a noun, so I'm going to say ending the tranquility. So there is still the sound of waves with their once gentle splashing growing louder, ending this, no, I think this tranquility is probably better. Okay, so there we go. There's the very final um, part of your piece of creative writing. It's about going beyond the picture it's about thinking much bigger than your setting, um, than the immediate setting, your immediate surroundings. Try and think about what might be in the distance, what, what weather is there, what sky, what's the light like, is it getting darker, is it getting brighter, it depends on your, on your um, story. Think about the skyline, think about what goes beyond your picture. And then try right at the end to link back to your very first paragraph. Now this week, because you're just trying out the zoom out paragraph, that's going to be quite hard, but maybe think about what you may have started with in your drop and go back to it. Okay, um, hopefully this these um, four weeks of videos have been, well, five weeks of videos have been useful. When you start year 10, which is not that long away, um, you will be using this structure then to work on your creative writing and developing it and looking at it in different ways. So you need to make sure you remember it. Okay, good luck with this week with your zooming out and um, have a lovely week off for half term.